Good morning, welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Friday, August 14, 2009. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S. It's 4.30 p.m. in London. In Mexico City, it's 9.30 a.m. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our instant mail address on AOL is CADEX TV. Um, on this day in history, in 2003, in the northeastern United States and parts of Canada, a major blackout occurred, putting 50 million people in darkness for approximately seven hours. Economic damage was substantial. Now to our main news. More on Typhoon Morakot. The president of Taiwan says that the typhoon, in fact, has killed at least 500 people on the island. He's calling on rescue crews to redouble their efforts. 7,000 homes were destroyed. Over $1.5 billion in agricultural property damage was done. The president said at a national security conference that uh, he's redoubling efforts throughout the country. He calls it the most severe damage to Taiwan in 50 years. The typhoon dumped more than six feet of rain on Typhoon last weekend. A total of 15,000 villagers have now been ferried to safety from inaccessible mountain regions, another 2,000 people are still stuck. 380 people are still believed to be buried in the debris of a town called Shaolin, which is the hardest hit village in the southern part of the country. The military finally opened the road to Shaolin this morning, so uh, presumably by tomorrow the final toll will be released. Now to the Atlantic, um, a low pressure system uh, just around uh, uh, the red number two there as the Cape Verde Islands, which uh, just as a little bit of a coincidence, uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was visiting this morning. Her plane took off from there this morning to head back to Washington. Uh, that disturbance, number two, uh, is the one that we're keeping an eye on. Number one is the disturbance we've been tracking all week. That storm has just about dissipated. It's expected to go nowhere. But number two now, uh, will likely develop into a tropical depression in the next few days. Uh, the storm is about 170 miles south-southwest of southern Cape Verde, and the weather people are saying it stands a greater than 50 percent chance of developing into a, into a hurricane. So uh, that's something that we'll be monitoring as well. Out in the Pacific, uh, Guillermo has now become a hurricane. You can see it's tracking right now uh, expected to arrive in the vicinity of the Hawaiian Islands sometime by Tuesday or Wednesday. It's packing winds right now of 75 miles per hour. It's uh, right now about 1,100 miles off the coast of Mexico. Um, so uh, it's moving at about 12 miles per hour right now, but uh, we'll keep our eyes on it too. CNA is making some news. They've announced that this man, John Hennessy, has been promoted to become chief executive of CNA's European operations. Um, Hennessy apparently uh, joined CNA back in 1982 as an underwriting trainee. During his 27-year career with the company, he served uh, in multiple home office roles and field roles, including the Milwaukee branch manager, central region president, and most recently, Senior Vice President of Distribution Management. Mr. Hennessy will be based in London. And here's an interesting story. A major Japanese insurance company, Nippon Koa, has discovered alleged embezzlement. An insurance agency head in Yamaguchi Prefecture in Japan is thought to have stolen over a million dollars in premiums from policyholders with Nippon Koa Insurance. The embezzlement was uncovered last month when a corporate customer queried an unpaid reimbursement on a canceled 50 million um, yen policy. Nippon Koa had no trace of the payment and based on its inquiry suspected that the agency head had failed to inform Nippon Koa of the contract and stole the premium. The agency head subsequently admitted to 10 other similar cases. He's under arrest. The reason we brought that up is that about a year ago today I was in Yamaguchi. It's a very interesting town. Stock market's taking a hit today. It's down about 150 points. We'll go to a word from our sponsors.
The United Kingdom has budget troubles, of course, but it's not going to prevent them from providing $562 million U.S. in loans toward the development of wings for the Airbus A350. In return, Britain is getting an 18% share of the work on Airbus's new long-range plane. Airbus needs the repayable aid to help fund the purchase of machine tools as it begins production. The A350 is going to compete with the Boeing 787. France is going to give 2 billion US. Germany is uh, going to provide about 1.1 billion euros. The British move will guarantee 1,200 jobs at Airbus's UK factories. Uh, the breakdown of some of the other countries' contribution uh, are as follows. France is going to get 38% of the work. Germany is going to get 34% of the work, and Spain is going to get 10% of the work. So it's an interesting way to split the work up. One uh, way to split the work up that Boeing has been trying with the 787 does not seem to be working. Boeing with the 787 had gone out of their way to become a global contractor and had parts of the plane manufactured from different sources throughout the world. 787 has been having trouble. They have stopped production at a 787 facility in Italy that was making parts of the plane's fuselage. Boeing ordered its subcontractor, Alenia Aeronautica of Naples, to stop work two months ago, this after structural flaws were found in the wing. Boeing downplayed the news, saying Alenia was installing a fix to the problem. Boeing, of course, canceled the maiden flight of the 787 earlier this summer, and it's not yet announced a new target date. The plane's about two years behind schedule. Some news from Nigeria that the Uturugu gas plant in the western delta region was shut down yesterday. This after an incident on a pipeline connecting to the facility. Royal Dutch Shell owns the facility and they did announce that the plant was shut down because of an incident on the Escravos Lagos pipeline system. Uh, there have been no reports of violence regarding the pipeline. However, local press reports are saying that the plant itself had been attacked. Yesterday, we announced that the U.S., Germany, and France were moving out of recession. Today, Hong Kong joins. They've climbed out of the recession in the second quarter to report surprisingly buoyant growth as the global downturn begins to moderate. Heavily reliant on trade and banking, Hong Kong lurched into a recession after the financial world convulsed and Western demand for exports dropped. Data coming out this morning showed that the local economy grew 3.3% in the second quarter. China and South Korea also reported that their economies grew during the second quarter, as did Singapore. So it looks as if uh, things are finally beginning to stabilize. Good. Here's an interesting story. Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer, apparently was in a car accident last night in his native Baltimore. Here's a picture of his uh, Cadillac uh, Esplanade uh, SUV. Uh, he collided with another car um, at about 1.30 in the morning. Baltimore police said they have no updates on the woman who would drive in the other car. It was a Honda Accord. She was described as shaken up and taken to a hospital. Two passengers in uh, Phelps's Escalade were not harmed. Police spokesman said that Phelps was interviewed by the police and alcohol was not a factor. No citations were issued and uh, the accident is still being investigated. Unfortunately, when you're Michael Phelps and you have uh, 12 Olympic gold medals around your neck, everything you do is fair game for the news. Well, we wish you a pleasant weekend. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. If not, we'll see you Monday.